good morning or afternoon, I don't know, time isn't real, it's fine. I wore this because I wanted to distract from the fact that I hadn't washed my hair in a while, but I think maybe, if anything, it just draws attention to that. So, I don't know. I had a really bad reading year at the beginning of 2020, for about the first few two months I didn't read anything, and now, due to a certain situation, I've had quite a lot of time to read recently, which, you know, don't get me wrong, it's nice, but you know, I also miss, you know, the other things in life, <laughs> like going outside. But yeah, so I thought I would just do this video, um, because for the first time in a while I have enough books to merit doing a video about what I've been reading. So the first book I read, I think, like, near the end of March, uh, was this book. Oh god, there's a hair in it. Cool. Uh, this book, Aurora Rising, by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff, who also both co-wrote um, The Illuminae Files, and I've only read the first book of that, but I remember enjoying it. Unfortunately, I wasn't that impressed. <laughs> I enjoyed, um, like, the kind of the build-up and the, the, the kind of setup of the story. It follows this guy, Tyler, who's kind of like the hunky, uh, cool guy at this, like, space pilot academy. He's like the best pilot or whatever and he has this thing called the draft where he gets his pick of like who he wants on his space crew. Um, but then the night before the draft he can't sleep so he goes out and does a little fly around and then finds like the wreckage of this spaceship that's been kind of missing for like hundreds and hundreds of years and then he gets like a little alert saying that there's someone still alive in there. So he goes to try and save this person, um, this girl and then he brings her back and her name is Aurora and when she wakes up she realizes that you know she's been in cryogenic sleep for a very long time and all her family are dead so that's fun um, and then when she tries to like research her mission and her uh, spaceship there's like a lot of weird misinformation and there's been like a weird cover-up so um, she's kind of like an outlaw um, and the government are kind of after her because she's the only one that knows like the truth but then she's also got memory loss because she's been in space for a very long time. Tyler, um, you know, has his like crew of misfits um, and then they're protecting this this girl, Aurora, this weird space girl, and then she has like these weird powers and everything. So it had like all the right ingredients for kind of like a fun YA space opera thing, but I just, I don't know, it got very tropey like around the middle and I just wasn't that connected to a lot of the characters. I don't really remember a lot of their names. You know, they were all quite recognisable, you know, the kind of sarcastic, quippy YA characters, and there was just nothing really that set them apart. Um, they were just kind of like sarcastic, fun, space people. <laughs> I don't know if I'm describing it right. It just, it felt quite tropey, and then um, all of the kind of ships were established very quickly. There was no real kind of build-up or surprise, and which is a shame because I enjoyed the setup and the concept and it could have been really fun but I just it's a bit too long as well and I don't really connect enough to the characters to really want to keep reading so yeah I don't think I'll be continuing with this series unfortunately I then read uh, Heartburn by Nora Ephron and um, Nora Ephron is um, normally a, well <laughs> normally she's a screenwriter for When Harry Met Sally and Sleeps in Seattle like really classic classic rom-coms um, and she wrote this novel called Heartburn which is about um, her finding out that her husband was cheating on her with like a much younger woman um, and it's apparently so autobiographical that her real life husband actually tried to sue her over the novel and I really liked it I mean there's a lot of stuff about kind of marriage uh, which obviously <laughs> I'm not married I'm never been married um, so I, I wouldn't say like I related to it but I found it interesting the only thing is um, she actually makes reference to it in the book but whenever you get kind of close to describing or a you know, experiencing a really deep and raw emotion, um, she kind of skirts away from it and she acknowledges that even in the text that like she has to cover up her feelings with like a joke or something, she has to turn everything into a joke or a story or something funny that happened to her, like an anecdote, rather than actually face how hard it was. That was interesting and obviously like I think a lot of us have a tendency to do that so it was interesting to see that play out in a novel but then it did keep the reader at quite a distance I think. Um, I think maybe this is one that I'll kind of grow to love once I'm older maybe and have experienced some of the things in the novel um, but it still is a very, it's a well written book and it's an enjoyable read and it's, it's an interesting delve into someone else's mind for a while. I then read Sorcery of Thorns um, which I was very excited to read because I'd heard it's like a bookish 
fantasy and, and it's like a fantasy novel that's very much about books, um, which I like. So we start off in this a big library um, and in this world books are alive. So there are different classes of books and then class 10 is like dangerous, dangerous books. So books of like really bad magic. So in this world sorcerers are kind of deemed as evil and people don't trust them. Um, and then there are grimoires, all the, the books of sorcery and like I said there are like class 10s which are really dangerous ones and are kept in like really uh, big libraries which are kind of like prisons and they're guarded by wardens. And so we're following Elizabeth <laughs> who is wanting to be a warden and she has a special affinity with the book. She can kind of like calm them down and knows how to behave around the grimoires. Um, and her director of the library you know, wants her to become a warden and, and is encouraging her. And then one night her director is killed and she's found, Elizabeth is found at the scene of the crime um, and she had to defeat this uh, grimoire that turned into a malefic, which is like an evil, evil monster. Um, and then they all suspect her and they have to send her away for questioning. Um, so I really enjoyed that beginning and I really loved the, it was a very unique idea of kind of books being alive and being monstrous. And um, I really liked the kind of setting of the fantasy world. However, I did feel like it did get tropey quite quickly. <laughs> there is this mysterious sorcerer who as soon as he comes in, like, you immediately know that he's going to be the love interest. He's called Nathaniel Thorne and he wears like emerald capes. And I'm like, okay, like he's the hot one. We all know that. It gets a bit slow in the middle. And again, the person who becomes a central villain for the novel, when they're introduced, they're not expressly introduced as the villain. They kind of come in as like a friendly face, but I just, you kind of know that they're going to be the villain and so there was a lot of things that I found a bit predictable and I kind of knew where this was heading um, round about the middle point but I still enjoyed it, It was it's well written and it's and it's fun and it passes the time and it's an interesting concept but I'm not particularly wedded to the characters um, and it didn't like properly grip me. I then read The Boy, The Mole, The Fox and The Horse and this book was everywhere at the end of last year. It was the Waterstones book of the year. It very much reminded me of Winnie the Pooh, the, the beautiful um, art style. I don't know if you can see, I'll try and like film some proper like close-ups because it's just, it's just gorgeous. And I've seen reviews in two camps for this book. One half is this is so beautiful, this is so inspiring, what a lovely, heartfelt, charming book. And the other camp is like oh it's shallow and it's just fake deep and you know they're they're just kind of Instagram quotes or tweets on a page with like pretty drawings um, and I'm in neither of those camps. <laughs> this book is not going to change your life. There aren't like lots of life lessons in here that you're going to be like oh damn like why haven't I been doing that? This, this changes my life and my worldview. It's not that kind of book but what it does do is remind you of some simple things that are very easy to forget. So things that we hold dear in life, like, you know, friends, family, um, and just little lessons that are very easy to forget, you know, like not to compare yourself to others and, and not to take things too hard and to really value what's important. I then read The Seven Husbands of Eglin, oh my god, The Seven Husbands of Eglin Hugo, that's what I read, no, I read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, um, which is a book that was everywhere and it was on everyone's TBR was on everyone's like best of the year. So this follows Evelyn Hugo, clearly, who is this um, big Hollywood movie starlet and, and, and is in these big iconic movies. Probably someone like, you know, Betty Davis or Marilyn Monroe, that kind of level of, you know, icon. Um, and she's coming to the end of her life and um, she's been like notoriously private throughout her life. And then she reaches out to this one magazine and asks this one specific reporter um, to, to write a story. Um, and this one specific reporter, Monique, she has no idea why she's the one who's been picked to to um, talk to Evelyn Hugo. She's not one of the most famous journalists at her magazine, and she's quite low level. And when Monique arrives um, at Evelyn's apartment, Evelyn starts telling her her life story. Um, and she's very famous for having seven husbands, and the book is kind of structured in that way. Um, and you go through each marriage, um, and you find out more and more about Evelyn and about her life, and you just... You grow to love her, basically, and this is a really, really compelling book. From the first page, I was, I was hooked, um, and it's just so well written, and I love it because I was watching this video recently about kind of um, what you should do if you want your book to get published, or you know, like common mistakes that like new writers make, la la la. And everyone always says, you know, like you have to show, don't tell. And I swear, this book is just 
telling and that was quite encouraging because you can write however you want as long as it fits your story and um, there's no like hard and fast rules and that's quite liberating because this whole book is just Evelyn telling her story it's just she sits down and she's like my mother was born here I was born here and I met this guy and then this happened and obviously it's, it's a lot better written than that um, but it's, it's very compelling and it is just storytelling at its core, it's storytelling at its finest, it's just following someone as they tell you what they did and how they felt and what their life is like and it's it's beautiful. My first five star book of 2020. I then read The Loneliest Girl in the Universe by Lauren James <sighs> and I had such a weird <laughs> relationship with this book. It's a YA sci-fi um, and the basic premise is that there is this girl who's kind of stranded in, well she's not stranded but she's alone in space um, and she's heading towards Earth 2, um, but her parents died on the ship, so she's now alone and she's in contact with NASA and they're kind of guiding her, but she's very lonely, very far away from, you know, civilization. And then she gets a kind of strange message from her therapist at NASA, who's kind of been coaching her about, you know, how to deal with the loneliness and how to deal with her feelings and everything, um, that suddenly war has broken out on planet Earth and they don't know how they're going to communicate and things like that. And then they also get news that there's a second ship being sent out also to Earth 2 that's going to catch up with her because it's a lot faster and then it's going to take, it's going to connect to her ship and then they're going to arrive at Earth 2 a lot quicker than she was originally meant to. So obviously this is kind of good news, she's very happy um, that, you know, she's not going to be alone for like another 20 years, so it's going to be like two. And I was very gripped by it. I've seen a lot of reviews that there's this weird kind of twist or there's like a really dark tone at the end so I was quite compelled when reading so I started reading it about 11 at night and I finished it at like 4 or 5 a.m because I just wanted to get to the end and know what this big twist was. The twist was great, <laughs> it takes a very dark tone. I was actually like proper anxious when I was reading it, I was like oh god you know and some parts of this is written like a horror novel, there's this really horrible bit where like the lights start going out on the ship and I was like oh god Christ you know it was very I was very tense but I only ended up giving this three stars because I don't want to give spoilers but the ending didn't really sit right with me like I enjoyed it in the moment and I was very gripped to finish it and then the more I thought about it afterwards I was like does that make sense and then I, I told the plot like in detail to a couple of friends and they were like yeah that seems strange and I was like yeah yeah <laughs> and then I felt bad for giving it three stars because I was so, you know, invested in the beginning but it just it lost me a little bit towards the end. Um, but I still would recommend it if you're inter interested in YA sci-fi and you're looking for something that's a little bit different because this did definitely surprise me in the direction that it went. And the most recent book that I've read is Expectation by Anna Hope um, and this follows um, three women throughout their lives. So at the beginning of the novel it kind of sets the scene and they're all uh, like nearing 30 I'd say and um, they're 29 I think and they're all living in this beautiful house in London Fields and they go and get food and flowers from the market, they eat lunch in the park, they go to art galleries, it's like a very bougie kind of privileged like city lifestyle that they lead and then it kind of s skips forward to um, like five six years later and they're kind of not where they thought they would be in life so one of them is married um, with a baby, one of them is married and trying desperately to have a baby through IVF and it's not working and then the other one is uh, trying to kind of push through her career as a failing actress and really trying to you know make ends meet. On the blurb it's described as um, like Sally Rooney's normal people but if it had been about female friendship and I, I see that comparison it is written in a, in a very similar way and I enjoyed that the writing is, is compelling and you do get a real sense of the characters they feel like real people. The only thing I would say is that I wasn't expecting this to be as much about motherhood as it ended up being which is silly because it's actually a quote in the front about motherhood but I just I don't know I guess I just didn't take that in. <laughs> I thought it would be more about kind of friendships, now friendship shifts and change, um, but it was more about I guess how you navigate being a mother and also being a good friend and yeah I guess it was, yeah I didn't have quite the emphasis on friendship that I thought it would but it was definitely compelling, definitely well written and the characters felt very real and fleshed out. I loved the flashbacks, there are flashbacks throughout the novel about when they all met at school and when they met at uni and things like that. Um, 
I love those little kind of snippets into the past when they really were about kind of the friendships and the dynamics between the girls. And then the present narrative, which was more about their families, was like a little less engaging, but still um, I enjoyed it enough to, to really um, recommend it and really connect with the characters. Oh, my foot's asleep. So thank God I've reached the end of the video and I can move. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching this video. That's all the books that I've been reading recently and I'm hoping to read a lot more, get through my, my huge TBR, um, which will be like a nice distraction from this whole this whole weird situation that we find ourselves in. Um, and I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.